Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of a thyroid gland showing the presence of a tumor. We can see two slices here and the region of the tumor is here as I am outlining. And on this slice, it is here. The diagnosis is medullary thyroid carcinoma. The tumor itself is a little bit irregular with some areas that appear to be infiltrating into the thyroid parenchyma as you can see here. And I'm just going to do a very quick recap of normal thyroid which is composed of these rounded follicular structures lined by cuboidal cells with very uniform round nuclei and the follicles contain pink proteinaceous colloid material. Now let's take a look at the tumor, and this is better seen in the other section here. So on low magnification, we can see that the tumor appears to be quite circumscribed in some areas. However, there is no definite uh, limiting capsule, and in some areas we can see the tumor is infiltrating into the normal benign thyroid adjacent to it. The architecture of the tumor is forming nests. So we can see these solid nests of cells, rounded nests, and sometimes larger sheets. And in between the nests, there are a lot of small congested blood vessels. Let's take a closer look within each nest. And we can see that the cells are relatively uniform. They resemble each other very closely. The nuclei are rounded. And in some of the cells, we can see binucleation, for example, in this particular cell. Again, binucleation in this cell. There are some larger nuclei, while majority of the nuclei are of similar size. Occasional nuclei are larger than the rest. This is not uncommon in the setting of neuroendocrine tumors. And let's have a closer look at the nuclear chromatin. So many of the cells have what we call stippled chromatin, which is quite costly granular. And we can see that there are some um, bigger sort of granules, for example, here as well as here. And this is what we call salt and pepper pattern for chromatin. The pepper are the coarser granules and the salt is the finer granules. We can appreciate this granular appearance very nicely here. And this is the classical appearance of neuroendocrine tumors. We don't see any obvious necrosis moving around. However, there are some interesting areas which have this pinkish appearance. And zooming into this, we can actually appreciate this amorphous pink material that is extracellular. And this is amyloid. So this tumor is producing amyloid and endocrine tumors can produce amyloid. This would actually be positive for calcitonin, which is the endocrine product, the hormone that is produced by these neoplastic cells. And of course, if we were to stain this with an amyloid stain, for example, Congo red, we would see the classical appearance. And I'm going to show you this now. These are actually annotated pictures taken from the same case, and this is taken from PathWeb. And we can see that the tumor cells have been labeled. And moving on, this is the Congo red stain in an area where there is amyloid. So on light microscopy, there is a salmon pink kind of color, quite pretty. But if we polarize this and we look at it under polarized light microscopy, we'll see this very classical apple green birefringence. And this is what Congo red looks like when there is amyloid present. Hence, in summary, this is an example of medullary thyroid carcinoma. We can see a tumor here which has a very nested architecture on low magnification and the cells are very uniform with rounded nuclei. Some of the cells show binucleation or multinucleation and the chromatin has a very stippled salt and pepper appearance, which is classical for endocrine tumors. And we also see the presence of amyloid in some areas. Thank you.